Anybody, if you're in the medical field and you want to debate me, I'm going to do one better. I'll have somebody with me in the field of medicine that is more knowledgeable than me and we'll debate it together. Because my end of this, how dare you try to do this to a child? You deserve worse treatment than anybody on the street that I know. Because we don't do that to children. You're worse than any mob guy ever. You're worse than Roy DeMeo and Greg Scarpa together, combined, and the Iceman. They didn't target children. Welcome to another sit down with Michael Francis. Hope everybody is doing well. All is very good, very blessed on this end. As always, we give God all the praise, honor, glory, and thanksgiving for that. Before I get started, thank you to the people of Cleveland and Lorain, Ohio. We had a great event Saturday night. People were just so warm, so welcoming, so accepting. It was just a great event, great theater, Lorain Palace Theater. People were great. They brought me food. Uh, we had a great Q&A, great VIP you know, uh, encounter afterwards. It was just wonderful. So thank you. It's a great city. And you know, go there and visit Little Italy. The people are just wonderful. We talked about a lot of things, and we got a lot more shows coming up. So thank you very much for that. And we got a couple more coming up. We're going to announce it. I'm not going to get into that tonight. You know, people, you know my past. I spent a lot of time on the street as a recruit, as a soldier, as a cop regime in the Colombo family. You get it. I've been arrested over 18 times. I've been indicted seven times. I've been to trial five times. I've been to prison for eight years, spent three years in solitary, visited my father for over 20 years, almost 25 years, been through everything that you can imagine with respect to the court system, okay? I don't like it. I know it. I understand the law. I understand the system. I understand law enforcement. I got involved in politics. Yes, I paid some off at the time. I did all of that stuff. So when I talk to you about certain things, I come from that perspective. It's part of who I am. It's my worldview. It's not what I'm doing now, okay? But that doesn't leave you, you know? Listen, I'm a Christian. When I came to Christ, I didn't get a lobotomy. I still forget the stuff I did on the street. I just resist all of that because I know it's wrong. And I'm telling you this, I don't glorify the mob life. You know that. But neither do I say things that are untrue about it. I don't do that. And I don't mock any of the guys there. It's not my place to do that. Not my place at all. But understand something. There's things going on now that I'm seeing in our government and our world that I didn't see on the street. Forget the Roy DeMeos. Roy DeMeo was a serial killer. The mob didn't make him a serial killer. Roy DeMeo was who he was with the mob or without the mob. Same with Greg Scarpa, because I know you bring that up. Same with the Iceman, who wasn't really a part of the mob. But these people were who they were. The mafia didn't make them that way. That's who they were, regardless of where they were. They would have just done the same thing but differently. Now, does the mob make some people more violent than they would have been? Yes, of course. Am I sugarcoating anything? No. Did I see violent acts? Of course. Okay, I'm not sugarcoating anything, nor am I saying that it's right. But I'm telling you this now. Some of the things that I'm seeing in government, some of the things that I'm seeing by people on the street, I didn't witness in my time in that life. People wouldn't do the things that are going on now. And I have to talk about it. You know, I do. Yes, I'm doing the mob stuff. You saw the last one I did on James Gondolfini, who I love, by the way. 10-year anniversary, I guess, of the passing of his death. We did something about The Sopranos. It was great. And I'm going to continue to do that. But I am so thankful for all of you. The last several videos that I did, we talked about issues, real issues. The response was terrific. Michael, thank you for finally getting into this. We wanted to hear it from you. Your perspective on these issues. So I'm going to continue to do that. It's not politics. I hate politics. We're talking about issues that are impacting our lives. Unfortunately, politics have an impact on that. But we're talking about issues. And I have one today that's just burning inside of me that I have to talk about. I mentioned it, but I got to talk about it because I have to make you aware. Because if you listen to certain media outlets, you're not going to know about this stuff. You're just not. So I want to be that voice. You take the information, do it at what you will, but at least you get the information. I have a platform, I'm going to give it to you from my perspective as a former mobster and a current, you know, person of faith. So I'm going to read an article that just disgusted me. 
Got me sick. And I think many of you are going to feel the same way. Got me sick. I'm going to read it. And I did some research behind it. It's accurate. Because I don't want to say things that are not accurate. The other day I did something on the Hell's Angels. And I told you, it was an article that I read. Pretty accurate. Some inconsistencies in it. But I read an article. It wasn't my research. But I think most of it was pretty true. And some people commented, Michael wasn't exactly that way. Okay, this guy did his research. But this, I believe to be pretty accurate and sickening, to tell you the truth. Let's get into it. Listen to the title of this article. Gender-affirming surgery puts a feel-good phrase on child butchery. Doesn't the title get you sick? Gender-affirming surgery. We're going to get into that and tell you what it is. Puts a, good, a feel-good phrase on child butchery. Just the, just the title gets you sick. A decision by a federal judge in Arkansas isn't always a matter of great importance. It's Arkansas. But this week, one was. The judge in question struck down Arkansas's ban on gender-affirming care for minors. That's people under 18 years old. Minors. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 years old. Okay? Minors. Arkansas was the first state to pass such a ban, although 18 other states have passed similar laws, including Alabama, Florida, Oklahoma, and Texas. All of them have been criticized by the White House. President Biden has called such bans outrageous and immoral. Our president has called bans on gender-affirming surgery for minors, for minors, outrageous and immoral. That's our leader. That's our president. Okay, let's keep going. White House spokesperson Corrine Jean-Pierre I don't know where this woman is coming from. Added, these are our kids. They belong to all of us. Really? Our kids belong to you? Our kids belong to Joe Biden? Is he going to take as good care of them as he did to Hunter Biden? Where does he come off saying that? Did he bear these kids? Did he get, get them through their illnesses? Did he pay for their schooling? Did he go through the emotional ups and downs you do with young kids? Really? Our kids? He's not, my kids are not his kids. And I'm sure 90% of the population believe the same thing. Who are they to say this? Where did this come from? What did we live in a commune? What is this communism? No, it's not. Nor is it socialism. Not yet. Our children are our children. We fed them. We clothed them. We bore them. We got them through their illnesses. We did it all. We took them on vacation. We fed them. We bled with them. They're our kids. They're nobody else's which is an interesting formulation. Until the day before yesterday, it was believed that children belong to their parents. That's how we all grew up. For the last, since the beginning of civilization, children belong to their parents. Who knew that the American parents are in a joint custody arrangement with the White House? Really? Try getting some help for your kids, okay, other than getting gender-affirming surgery. See how much help they give you. Perhaps you can drop them off there after school whenever you're in the area. Do you see how absurd this is? Well, what all this points to is not a normal political disagreement. It gets to the root of one of the most wicked things going on in our day. Wicked, that's the right word. Something that future generations will look back on with amazement and horror. I'm looking at it in amazement and horror right now, and so are many of you. I guarantee that within even just a few years, people will say of this era, what were they thinking? What were they thinking? Let's continue. Let's start with that innocent sounding phrase, gender affirming care. Remember that. It sounds so nice, doesn't it? Who doesn't want to affirm people, especially minors? I'll tell you who, any responsible adult. Because let's remind ourselves what this gender affirming care actually consists of. It consists of telling confused and often deeply unhappy children that their problems can all be sorted out if they decide that they were born in the wrong body and that this is fixable. And these are minors. These are your minor children. These are not adults. They're minors. Remember that. What do you think you're capable of, as, uh, of your child at 11, 12, 13 years old is deciding on their own? Something so critical, so critical. How is it fixable? First, by easy little things like puberty blockers and hormonal treatment. Do people realize what these things, also designed to sound simple and innocuous, actually are? They are drugs whose long-term effects we have almost no studies on. Do you want to put drugs in your kids that there are almost no studies on? Drugs that can, can change the chemistry of their bodies? Drugs that can have long-term effects? Do you believe that our president and our White House is affirming this? Do you believe that our doctors out there and psychologists and teachers and superintendents that are affirming this? They want to take your children 
and tell you, without your consent, by the way, without your consent, that you can give them medication, hormone treatments that are going to change the chemistry of their body before they're old enough to realize what the heck is really going on. You know, there's a study saying that a brain in, in a child doesn't really mature until they're in their, their 20s, 25, 26 years old. But they're affirming this for, for young kids. Because they haven't been used for long enough, that's why there's no studies on them. Usually, if you are going to drug thousands of American children, there's some interest in long-term effects before steaming ahead and handing out such drugs like candy. What we do know is that among children given these drugs, there seem to be an uncommonly high number of cases of osteoporosis and early-onset cancers. These puberty blockers and these hormone treatments, they do know they're showing a number, a high number of cases of osteoporosis and early onset of cancer. The White House is affirming this. The White House calls a ban on this for young children outrageous and immoral. This is the guy that's leading you? Really? This is the guy that says these are our children? They pretend you can come off these drugs and go straight back to normal. A lie. Do the research. It's an absolute lie. But since everyone is meant to affirm, most kids stick on the drugs. Hey, they're hearing our president. It's great. It's wonderful. They're hearing psychologists, teachers. And they're also saying, don't tell your parents. We want you to do this. We'll encourage you to do it. But don't tell your parents because they're our children. This is such BS. And I can tell you from people I have spoken to who have gone through this that there are plenty of consequences. Many of the young men end up with breast tissue. They have also been chemically castrated. Chemically castrated meaning they can't have children, can't have sex if they're castrated. That's what these things are doing. To minors, many were simply gay. Okay, if you're gay, you're gay. What do you need this junk for? If you're gay, you're gay. I'm not talking out against gay people, not at all. I'm talking about immoral people trying to put this garbage into our young kids and our minors. Chemically castrating gay men used to be seen as torture from the intolerant past. Today, it's seen as progressive and intolerant. They're even going after gay, they're, they're destroying gay men's lives. Do you believe this? People, this is true. This is factual. Factual. I'd love to debate anybody. You hearing this? You want to debate me? Let's do it. Let's do it. Right on YouTube. Open. Let's do it. I'm ready. Something which Arkansas also tried to ban and which has now been unbanned. Again, it sounds so innocent, does it? As though we should all take it as a fact that people who are unhappy in their bodies were born in the wrong bodies and that with a little nip of the knife, we'll all be well. That's what they're telling our minors. 10, 11, 12 years old. Oh, you feel more like a girl than a boy? Okay, don't worry about it. We're going to give you surgery. We're going to give you hormone blockers. We're going to do all of that stuff without knowing the long-term effects. And by the way, don't tell your parents. That's right. They want to keep this from the parents. There's a bigger agenda here, people. They're trying to break up the nuclear family. Do you not understand this? If they can control our young people, separate them from their parents, okay, that's what they're trying to do. It's the same reason they're letting illegal immigrants into this country. Because when it comes time to vote, what do you think they're going to do? They're going to try to get them a voter registration card. They're already doing that. They want to ban them having to have an ID. Why do you think they're doing that? Because when it comes time to vote, they go there, they send their minions out in the street, and they say, listen, you better vote our way, or else the other guy is going to send you back home. We'll keep you here. This is all a plan to keep control and keep power. I know. I was a mobster. I understand it. I see right through it, people. Well, it won't. If you're a girl being given gender-affirming surgery, you will start by being given a medically necessary double mastectomy. You want your kid getting a double mastectomy at the age of 12, 13, 14, 15? Is that what you want? If somebody tried to do that to my granddaughter at 11, I'd be in jail. I would be in jail. It's butchering. A double mastectomy. When women have cancer at an old age and they have a mastectomy, do you know that how emotionally difficult it is for them to deal with it? And they want to do this with young kids? That's mandatory, by the way. I'm sorry for what follows, but people have to know this. Any woman who has actually had to go through that surgery for serious health reasons will know it is not the fun little procedure the trans lobby call top surgery. Mastectomy to them is top surgery. Try to make it sound nice. Mastectomy, you know, that's not a fun word. You hear that, you go, what, what do you mean by that? But top surgery, ah, oh, not too bad, right? So they pull the wool over the kid's eyes, but tell them you're gonna get top surgery first. They don't tell them they're gonna butcher them and cut off their breasts, never again to be grown back. 
That's it. Once they're off, they're off. Oh yeah, you can try to get reconstructive surgery later on. It's never the same. Trust me. But it's positively breezy compared to the equal, equally cutesy named bottom surgery. That's what they call that. So you get top surgery, bottom surgery. Look at how they're catering to these kids to try to soften the blow of the butchery. I'm sorry for what follows, but people have to know this. For a girl, bottom surgery, listen to this please, will consist of flaying, flaying. You know what flaying means? They do that with fish. They flay them. You know what that means? With a knife, they cut them. Flaying a young girl's leg or arm to the veins. This is your minor child. Flaying them to the veins, their legs or their arms. You think that's not going to scar forever? To the vein. Leaving her with an ugly, unhealable wound on her body while attempting to make something approximating a penis out of it. They're flaying her, her inner thighs and her arms to the vein. This is your child, okay? This is what Biden is saying, you know, is immoral and outrageous to stop this. That's Biden's position. That's your leader. How low can you go? And they try to make a penis out of that. I mean, just close your eyes for a minute and think about that. Butchering your young daughter to try to make a penis out of it. Your minor daughter. Think of it about anybody. I don't care how old you are. Think of what you're going through. This skin graft will often not take. It will often not take. When it does, the result would neither resemble nor operate like a penis. So what are they doing it for? What the hell are they doing it for? I'll tell you why. Money and control. Because this surgery costs a lot of money. It's not cheap. And control. They're destroying this kid forever. Destroying the kid forever. Yes, debate me. Come on, challenge me. I welcome you. Let's do it. That's just the girls. For the boys, gender-affirming bottom surgery actually means that their penis will be cut in half. Your son's penis will be cut in half with gender-affirming surgery. Are you listening to this? flayed and partially inverted into their body. Is this not butchery? Would you allow this for your minor child? Why do you think they want, it, they want to take this away from parents? They want to do this without parental consent. They want to get your kid in a room, talk to him, convince them that this is what they need, that they're really not a boy in a boy's body, but they're actually a girl, and we're going to help you become that by butchering them. This attempt at creating a vagina will cause complications for life. The wound will keep trying to heal up. Urination will almost never be straightforward. Infections will be commonplace, as will painful internal hair growth. Anybody, if you're in the medical field and you want to debate me, I'm going to do one better. I'll have somebody with me in the field of medicine that is more knowledgeable than me and we'll debate it together. Because my end of this, how dare you try to do this to a child? You deserve worse treatment than anybody on the street that I know. Because we don't do that to children. We would have never done that to a child. Never. Never in a million years. But you do it, you're worse than any mafia, okay? And I'm talking to you. Any medical practitioner that would dare to, to do something like this to a minor child, okay, should be in jail for the rest of their life or something worse. None of this is about one-off visit to the hospital. Every child put through gender-affirming surgery will be in and out of the hospital for the rest of their life. The rest of their life. They will have an ongoing relationship with multiple doctors to continue doing the most basic things in life. I'm sorry to have to relate these details, but they're important because just look at how the lies have embedded in this country, even in the media and political world's language around this new industry. Just this week in the New York Times, reported on the various state bans with the heading, the anti-trans push in America. How dare you? This is a responsible publication, the New York Times. This is an anti-trans. This is anti-butchering of minor children. Call it what it is. They're cowards. They have no backbone, and they're trying to pull the wool over your eyes. They're trying to take control of your children. Parents, we've got to stand up for this, man. We have to. My kids are all older, but I have grandchildren. Anybody would dare even try to do this to one of my grandchildren. I'll go to jail willingly. And yes, I'm a Christian. Willingly, I'll go and I'll make my peace with the Lord after that. They went on to describe various of the state bans as affecting medical care for youth. You call this medical care? Who the hell are you kidding? What kind of coward, spineless person are you to try to take control and do this to a child? You're worse than any mob guy ever. You're worse than Roy DeMeo and Greg Scarpa together, combined, and the Iceman. They didn't target children. You do this to somebody, who are you? 
What kind of human being are you to write this in a newspaper? He went on to describe various uh, of the state bans as affecting medical care for youth, puberty blockers, and surgeries for young people, and blocking treatments as well as surgeries for transgender minors. Other media, including conservative media, now routinely use similar language. Okay, even the conservative media, shame on all of you. So let me take up some language, that of the White House, what I have described above is going on across this country, and it is deeply, deeply immoral, and it's demonic. It is demonic. This is coming right out of hell. If Karine Jean-Pierre is right, and our kids belong to all of us, then we're encouraging and allowing child abuse on a nationwide, historic, shameful, industrial scale. It isn't the bans that are a problem, it's the fact that this cutesy titled butchery was ever allowed in the first place. God help us to allow a nation like ours to allow this kind of stuff on minor children. Did you hear what I described? I'm putting this article up there. I'm putting it up there. The judges should not be smacking down states. They should be prosecuting the doctors. Amen. Prosecute them. Pharmaceutical companies and insurance companies who are creating such lifelong misery for America's youth for their cynically self-enriching ends. And make no mistake, this is about power control the youth in the country, okay? Separate them from their parents, make them so dependent upon the state that they're your voting block, they take control of you. You put a kid through this misery for the rest of their life, what good are they? What are they gonna accomplish? This is barbaric, people. And yeah, I'm speaking out as loudly as I possibly can. I have no respect, zero respect, for Biden and the White House because of this. I don't care what else he did. Everything else he's screwing up, he's screwing up. And when you go after our children and want to butcher them for life, shame on you. You're a bad person. You're an evil person to do something like that. I don't know what else to say, man. Yeah, I'm worked up. I'm sorry. I have seven children. I have six grandchildren, one on the way. The thought of this happening to any child, I, I just can't fathom it, people. I'm sorry. Parents, you want to contact me? You want to put a coalition together? My friend Patrick Bed David, I understand, is upset about certain things. He wants to jump on this. We have to fight back. This is butchery. This is demonic butchery. Going after our kids. What do our kids need when they think they're, they should be in a different body? They need therapy. They need their parents to walk them through this. Maybe at the end of the day, it's true. But let them be adults. Let them be 18. Let them understand on their own. Give them all the therapy, all the psychological assistance that they need to get to that point. You don't butcher them at 10, 12, 13 years old. It's crazy. Okay, let me stop. I know I'm getting all worked up, but I'm sorry. You go after our kids, man. I've seen a lot in my life, but I, I can't stand for that. I just can't, can't tolerate it. So I'm gonna have to sign off, but we do have two questions before we do that, I promised. And so we're gonna, we're gonna answer two questions and then we're gonna go on. And uh, yes, I'll be back to somewhat normal next week. People, if you want me to continue these discussions, please let me know. And if you say, Mike, we don't wanna hear that, we'd rather be entertained by you, let me know also. This channel is for you, it's not for me, it's for you. We're here to entertain you, to inform you, to educate you, you know, to give you something to think about, to to tune in every day. If you think I'm off track, let me know. I hope not, because these are important issues, people. We have elections coming up. We have to put the right people in office. I don't care if it's Republican, Democrat, whatever. Doesn't matter. The right people that are gonna care for you, that are gonna have your back, like we used to say on the street. Not this stuff. Because remember, America's gonna come crashing down. Can you imagine what $33 trillion is? You can't. It's beyond our human comprehension to understand. You think this country is gonna outlast $33 trillion and growing? <laughs> it's not. People, prepare yourself, okay? Don't let them take our kids. Question number one. A mob guy went to a therapist today in 2023, like I said about the Sopranos guy. I said, if Tony Soprano, I should say, was ever visiting a psychiatrist, especially for an extended period of time, they'd kill him. He'd be gone. They'd whack him, no doubt, because they don't know what he'd be telling a psychiatrist. You know, you can't do that. Forget it. And the psychiatrist would be in trouble, too. Back in my day, for sure. Now, please don't tell me that Frank Costello once saw a psychiatrist. He did it one time. There was a reason. He didn't give up any information or anything like that. There was a reason. There's no comparison to him and Tony Soprano would never happen. In 2023, I mean, look, I, I don't pay close attention to what's going on in that life now. 
but I would imagine they would not stand for a boss, especially visiting a psychiatrist. What is he talking about? <laughs> you know, psychiatrist tries to get to your innermost thoughts. What is he talking about? If he talked about what Tony Soprano was talking about, he'd be in trouble. I don't think it would happen, but hey, this guy's walking the street that I was surprised would still be walking the street in the neighborhood. So who knows? Okay, but I doubt it. What are my thoughts about Hunter Biden? Okay, I've gotten asked this so many times in the last couple of days with his sweetheart deal. People, let me tell you this. Before I get to Hunter, let me say this. Joe Biden, I have to say, I have to say, Joe Biden said, I'm proud of my son. That was his comment after this, you know, this guilty plea, this nonsense guilty plea for two misdemeanors, okay, for a tax violation. I'm not gonna get into all of that because I'm gonna get harassed by ma many of you. I understand the law, you don't. I understand the investigative process, many of you don't. It's a sweetheart deal, it's a farce. He's the president's son, okay, I get it. He's been given favorable treatment. But Joe Biden's only comment is like thumbing his nose in the face of the American people by saying, I'm proud of my son. And then taking him to a state's dinner, you know, with, with all these people the next day after he took the plea. Let me tell you something, what I would have appreciated from Joe Biden. How many of us are parents out there? Many of us. I had a son who got himself in some trouble, okay? Did I try to bail him out? Of course. Did I stand behind him? Of course, because that's what parents do. But Joe Biden is the president of the United States. Wouldn't it have been nicer if he said, hey, people, look, my son has had problems, okay? He was a drug addict. My son has done a lot of bad things. You know, I tried to straighten him out. He is a good kid. For whatever reason, he went off the wrong way. He got himself in trouble. We all understand. We're parents. We know. What am I supposed to do? I stand behind my son. Did he get favorable treatment? I'm the president of the United States. You know, what do you want me to tell you, people? You know, this is a heartache that we have to bear. You know, but we all understand as parents, I'm going to do my best to straighten him out. And this is an older boy now. He's not a young kid, all right? But no, this president thumbs his nose in our face. I'm proud of my son. Really? You're proud of your son? And let me tell you this, these 11 scam companies that they have that do nothing but collect money, no brick and mortar behind them, no business behind them, nothing. All they're doing is collecting money to various people in the Biden family. People, I had 18 of those companies. And what were they? Same exact thing. I had a bank account and that's it, okay, to collect money illegal money, tax money that I was defrauding the government of. This is a racketeering scam. This is a racketeering deal, no doubt about it. Put me in front of his attorney, put me in front of Biden, put me in front of Hunter Biden, anyone, and I'll break it down for them because I did the same exact thing. This president, okay, I hate to say this, he's my president. This is treasonous what this guy is doing. The money that he's collecting from enemy nations, China, Ukraine, Romania. Are you kidding me? They're following the money. They're seeing it. No explanation. Why didn't Biden get up there and say, you know what? I have to explain this because my son is involved. I have to tell people what's going on. He don't care. He's thumbing his nose in your face. It's my Justice Department. They're covering for me. I got the media locked up. They're covering for me. And for the life of me, I don't understand the media. What are you protecting? This is your country. You live here. Do you want somebody in, in office that is selling out your country? If this was Donald Trump, so help me God, I'd be saying the same exact thing. This is not a partisan issue. This is a bipartisan issue. People, please understand this. The right people have to be in office, and when they're doing these things, you got to get rid of them. I can go on and on. I'm going to save it for another video. That's it for today. My feeling on Hunter, he's a poor soul. He's obviously used his father for influence peddling. It's so obvious. Okay, if you don't want to admit it publicly, at least tell yourself in your heart that you're not stupid. You know it's happening. 100% it's happening. These are all politicians. That's the political life, and that's the atmosphere we're living in now. I'm going to end it at that. People, how do I always leave you? Sorry I'm a little bit excited today, but the kids things, it gets me, man. That's crossing the, the, the line without a doubt. How do I always leave you? Same way. Be safe, man. You got you to gotta protect not only yourself, but your loved ones, your kids, your family, your wife, your daughters, everybody because they're coming for us. Be safe. Be healthy. Don't let this butchery into your household. None of this kind of stuff. Don't believe the pharmaceutical companies, okay? They're looking to make money and that's what they do. Be safe. Be healthy. God bless every one of you and God bless America. We need our Lord right now. Yes, I'll see you next time. Thank you.